Today, I want you to meet Dan, creator of the Samadhi Films and founder of the Samadhi Center. His work influenced more than 56 million people. He blends meditation and self-inquiry to lead others towards their true essence. And you, have you ever wondered how a single question can shift your entire perspective? Here, questions and answers walk together, creating rhythms of insight. Follow us on YouTube and IG at Mr. Jazzy. And this is the Jazzy Podcast. I'm Dan here on the podcast, and uh, it's just such an honor. I've been following your work, your films for so many years, and been participating in your retreat and online meditation for a long time. So really just honored to have you here, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So actually, I would like to do this a little bit differently, this very special episode. I would like to begin with reading a few little tiny paragraphs from the Tao, actually. And uh, so here it begins. It says, what difference between yes and no? What difference between success and failure? Must you value what others value? Avoid what others avoid? How ridiculous. Other people are excited as though they are at a parade. I alone don't care. I alone am expressionless, like an infant before it can smile. Other people have what they need. I alone possess nothing. I alone drift about like someone without a home. I am like a fool. My mind is so empty. Other people are bright. I alone am dark. Other people are sharp. I alone am dull. Other people have a purpose. <laughs> I alone don't know. I drift like a wave on the ocean. I blow as aimless as the wind. <laughs> so, just beautiful. Um, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So that, to me, you know, it doesn't get any more concise than that. Yeah, it really, it, you know, it's the question that comes up for people is sometimes on this, this path, you know, how, how do I become free? You know, we, we hear something like that. And, and the answer is right there. You know, it's in the, these polarities, you know, good and bad, uh, right and wrong, all of these polarities are the ego. You know, the ego is nothing but those those polarities, those preferences of wanting one thing over another. So when when the sense of I flips from that ego to pure awareness, you know, it just is. It, it has no preference it's just an awareness that is you know watching experiencing but um but it's not it's not entangled with all of those worldly concerns yeah yes yes yeah. indeed it's um like i think maybe the quote um is from the bible and i'm seeing it from one of one of your films um it says um uh, war walk or be in the world but not be of the world and um so <laughs> so yeah. for a lot of audience out there who may be very familiar with your work but just in case for some of the audience out there might be first time tuning in and uh, so then would you mind share with us your hero's journey how did you get on this path mm -hmm. yeah sure so for me um you know, I started out really um, embedded deeply in the matrix, you know, like a lot of people, um, just this this life initially was, um, you know, I was trying to figure out um, 
how how to be in this life and going after money, going after um, success, you know, working in the television industry and all of that, and um, was very disconnected in many ways, not really um, living, you know, in in a deep connection with this this avatar, um, not understanding that it is an avatar and thinking, you know, this is me, you know, in the world. And so there, there was a pathological state of sickness that came and, and a lot of uh, suffering and, um, you know, just, just health problems, type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. The body became very contracted and sick. And, um, and then um, the, the path with that um, led me to try to stop the mind. Like the mind was just pathological. There was no, no possibility of sleeping or, um, you know, getting any, any rest. So, so really what led me to meditation was just trying to quiet the mind and, and trying to get some peace just on a very superficial level. It wasn't, I, I didn't know about samadhi or, or the path or, awakening or anything like that i just wanted a moment of of peace from this this relentless mind and so i i ended up at a at a vipassana center um after a friend of mine went there and i he he had come back and he was he was in a very beautiful state and i thought okay whatever whatever happened with him that maybe that can help me in some way and so I was a complete beginner. I went in with total beginner's mind, totally ignorant of, of anything to do with meditation. And I just followed the instructions of just observing my breath, doing this body scan. And, and I did it, um, you know, for a long period of time. I just, I was very um, intent on, on following the instructions. And, and amazingly, I had a first, like a samadhi experience there, which changed my life. I, I woke up out of the character um, and, and it began a period of seeking then, um, you know, the, the mind wanted to figure it out then and see what, like, what was that? Because it, it was lost yeah. very quickly. It was a really a peak state um where you know i felt in in union with everything and and felt the energy of the universe i felt i thought i was you know because of my total beginnerness at that time i yeah. thought i was that was it i was like buddha or jesus and this is it and and uh, all all i had to do was that one meditation retreat and um but very quickly that state passed and and it was uh, um, then the the you know it became this the struggle to try and figure it out and try and um, get back to that state and it wasn't until many years later um, that I that I realized what happens with people when they when they have an, a, a glimpse of awakening um, there there is always the state you know, the mind body state will, will be very beautiful, um, often. So there's, there's a change in the, the experience of energy, the state of consciousness. And we, we sometimes mistake that state for the truth of who we are. And so, um, so the, who we, you know, the truth of who we are, isn't a state. It isn't something that comes and goes. There's, there's this, this awareness that is ever present that that is the knower of these states that comes and come, that come and go so um so you know we we can end up chasing these states we want to we want to get it back but it's it's not it's not the state that um will bring about freedom it's it's the recognition of the truth of, of who and what we are and it goes it goes back to that what you read at the beginning, you know, that, that awareness that we are is not, um, you know, it, it, there's no preference there. It's just an, an okayness with what is, with what is arising. And so these states will always change. The, the mind-body states will always come and go. Um, but, but true peace and t true liberation comes from th that recognition of the awareness that is 
the knower of all of these these different states. So um, so that um, so in my journey, um, it took many years, over a decade, to uh, um, basically fail in every attempt of the mind to figure it out and and to um, you know, I reading every sutra, I, I really hit it hard. I, I went into every tradition because I, I every everything I found seemed to be taking me actually further away okay. from that initial experience. So um, I kept learning and learning with the mind, and and that wasn't it. Um, nothing, you know. I I, I experienced a lot of um, amazing things along the way, but they were all temporary. And there was no liberation. It was still at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm, I wasn't free. I, my, the sense of I was still entangled with the character. So I, I had to just keep going until that character fully failed to um, awaken. And, and it was in that, that total failure at a, at a Zen center where um, they'd put in these conditions of no escape where Everything I had learned, all the books, all the teachings, everything was of, of no use. And, and I really came to realize I, I know nothing. You know, I, there's yeah. nothing that, you know, is going to set me free. And that, that, that mind, that little I failed fully. And it was when, when it gave up its seeking, gave up its struggling, um, and just sort of accepted that failure then that it was like the conditions were ripe for an awakening and that that's when i when i realized who was struggling who was trying to seek all of that time yeah right. and so the sense of i flipped out of that character and and that was um you know i i would say for me you know, whether you call it kensho or samadhi um there was there was just a, a a getting of the cosmic joke that yeah. um, you know that awareness that we are is always it's always been present it's always been there it's just this this mistaken identity of, of becoming identified with the, the character and that and depending you know different people will experience that in different ways that Kensho can be um, you know it can be like a small glimpse or it can be a, a very deep Kensho where that that primordial awareness is present and awake through waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. And and when when that happens, it's um, you know, it, it's clear who we are. You know, it's like the, yeah. you know, whatever that is that remains in mm -hmm. deep sleep, you know, that that it's and it's not just you know normally we, we use these words like consciousness or you know awareness but it's, mm -hmm. it's something unfathomable it's it's yeah. it's beyond all words and all pointing but whatever remains in deep sleep is is it it's that's the eternal that um you know when when Eckhart Tolle and people like that say you know I was never born that's what they're talking about it's it's this this awareness that is somehow outside of this whole game of life and death and, and time. Right, right. Well, then that, that what you just said there, it's really incredible. Hero's journey, maybe 10, 15, 20 years or even longer of, um, of, of your dedication, right? So um, personally, I'm curious as well, also asking for uh, the audience um, that they're probably curious. So you mentioned that you had these um, that like health issues. And um, so when you start to un go on this journey, like did those health issue went away or? Yeah, so yeah, it's interesting. So first my, my whole idea of what healing was, um, you know, changed during yeah. the, the journey. So, so right. initially the idea of healing was, you know, I wanted to go back 
to the old version of the Dan character and be able to eat all the things that were bad for the body. And, you know, I thought yeah. that that's what healing is to be able to, to do, you know, to go back to that state. Right. But, um, so through listening to the body and, um, you know, I, I, I really started to see the intelligence of the body. So the, the rheumatoid arthritis was, um, you know, it was like drawing consciousness deep into the body. So, so, um, part of, part of the path was to, um, you know, really go into the unconscious, you know, to see, um, you know, and, and make connection with the, the somatic field and, and, um, you know, so really, um, you know, through Vipassana and these, these different, different practices, um, you know, really seeing where these patterns of craving and aversion reside and, 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 um, making a connection directly with them in the body. So, um, so for me, the, the sickness was the, the gateway in, you know, sitting, sitting in meditation with, yeah. you know, the, the arthritis, like there was, it was like the bones were bur burning and, and, but it was drawing consciousness in and, mm -hmm. and it was, it was the perfect thing actually it was right. like it was my you know there was nothing that could have taught me better you know to to sit there in equanimity and just be in the body without preferences um whatever was was arising and then that whole rewiring process and you know freeing of samskaras um was was part of that as well so right. um so now you know in in my body now um, it's not, um, you know, there's no symptoms of that anymore. Like if I, I was, I was, um, diagnosed with type one diabetes at one point, um, mm -hmm. had all those symptoms with blood sugar and everything, all of that, as long as I, um, don't fall back into the old pattern, it's, it's like the body could fall back into that pattern. You know, if I, if I started eating the, the old foods and doing all the, crazy things that I was doing, you know, when I was, when I was younger, then that yeah. pattern would reestablish itself. Um, so, um, so there's, there's a maintenance, you know, it's, it's just learning, learning how to care for the body. Now it's like, like having a pet that, you know, you just, you just give it, you know, the things that will yeah. keep it healthy and, yeah. and maintaining it. And yeah. um, as long as I do that, those, those symptoms are, are not there. And, so my, my doctor w would say, uh, you know, I was probably misdiagnosed because supposedly type, type 1 diabetes isn't supposed to go away like that. Um, the pancreas is, is working now and everything. So right. he would just say I, I was misdiagnosed. So. Right, right. Mm -hmm. but, but in a way, in theory, you could say or someone could say that through your inner work and through letting go that um, these symptoms or this disease were healed. Someone could say that. Yeah, yeah, like that mind-body state. I think every, every dis-ease is, a, you know, it's a mind-body state and we can definitely yeah. shift those states. And I've, I've seen that with people over and over quite often. Um, you know, especially when when the mind is really involved in a state where, you know, the ego has like a grip on on the breath and, and the body, um, you know, that can that can be um, unraveled. And, and when that energy becomes free, then, yeah, whatever, you know, I think we can we can create the, the sort of state where we, we let go of the pattern. And then um, that energy, you know, or you, you could call it spirit or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, yeah. in some ways it's it's got its own agenda and its own intelligence. So, um, you know, we can get ourselves out of the way and then whatever unfolds from there, whether it's healing or, um, you know, some sort of evolution within the self structure, um, it, it then it's it's free to happen, you know, but but the little self can't always make that happen sometimes and sometimes what we think needs to happen or should happen um you know from the from the little self is isn't necessarily what's going to happen 
Yeah. 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 Absolutely understood. And um, so what about us? It seemed to be such a question on the mind because as you mentioned, and then as a lot of audience already aware of that, the mind always wants to know. However, the mind or my mind is curious that then when you are spending all those years are searching and dive deep into, let's say, the Taoism, Christianity, uh, Zen as well, everything. And one could certainly tell that from your films, they're amazing. And um, I also you mentioned that Joseph Campbell's quote, follow your bliss. So when you were doing all those years, how did you know that what you're doing now is your bliss? Hmm. Yeah, during during that time, um, yeah. Well, you know, it's like feeling your way in the dark. I think I've I've used the 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 John of the Cross quote, yeah. where you know this this path is sort of like feeling your way in the dark, and you know, in the moment, like you know, we know when when there's a sense of ease and flow in in our life. So so to me, that you know what Joseph Campbell says, follow your bliss, you know, follow that inner aliveness moment to moment. And, and it is that journey is a winding journey. You know, sometimes it seems like, like that aliveness is taking you in one direction, but then it, it changes. Um, so, you know, in retrospect, I, like I look back at life and I, I see there's an intelligence, there's a poetry to all of it of how, everything in life is happening for you and and um it seems to me that that when i look at, at life you know it, it's this perfect kind of poetry even even the supposedly bad things that happen or the challenges um you know were perfectly sort of orchestrated from this this kind of poetic intelligence so um but but when you're in it you know that's the mystery of life you know like right now i have no idea you know, a month from now, you know, what could unfold or how, how life is going to go, what, you know, what will evolve in this self-structure. You know, the, the conditioned mind can only know the past. It can only know what's, right. what's, what's come from the past. So, um, you know, so, the, so being awake, um, you know, being aware like that, you know, the conditioned mind will never grasp what the truth of what we are you know it's not the mechanism that is capable of that it's only it's only when we become um unfiltered that that um we you know we really awaken to that that awareness but the the conditioned self will never know it um and you know when we when we have that awakening then um it doesn't matter you know we the the mind can be in a a state of you know narrow contractedness so it we're you know life is filtered or unfiltered but it doesn't matter the the awareness is present regardless so so the you know to me the you know the conditioned self is is really um almost irrelevant at a certain point once once that awareness you know it self recognizes um then you know, these, these different states can come and go in the mind. And, you know, so we, we can be, you know, doing our taxes or whatever, whatever is, is happening yeah. in life, you know, and, and there's a, there's thinking, there's all this stuff happening. Um, you know, at the beginning it's, you know, stillness and, and, and having that dropped off mind is so important to, to recognize awareness. But once awareness is recognized, then it's less important we still need to maintain the mind because there, there's still like a gravity that uh, that that hide and seek game, you know, really can. Um, there, there's something about the matrix where where the you know awareness is is obscured over and over. So, um, like Ramana Maharshi said, there has to be an ongoing vigilance, um, just you know, like like caring for this. Um, self-structure um because if we if we just you know jump into the game and and um it's we you know it's designed to make us forget who we are 
Um, this whole matrix is designed to obscure so that we become identified with the character. So we have these, these experiences. So, um, so I, I think, um, you know, for me, the path is, it's not like, you know, there's ever any end to the learning and the evolution that's happening. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, then what you said, um, something pop up in my mind, someone should put on a t-shirt that says like equanimity while you do your taxes or something. <laughs> that would be, <laughs> that would be, yeah, yeah, that would, yeah be there's funny. certain things like that are a, a good test yeah. of practice. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and I know that then you and your team, you host in-person online retreats and your work is so amazing and so great. Everybody could see that. <clears throat> the question is, when is there motivation? Like why you do what you do or why um, this Dan character is doing um, this? Yeah, that, it's, that's a great question. And you know, it's like again, we go back to that that what you what you read initially. Yeah. You know, so awareness, you know, the truth of of who and what we are, has no ambition. You know, it's yeah. it's like like it's perfect as it is. You know, so, right. um, but yet, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, these these characters, these avatars. You know, it's like each each one has sort of. Um, you know, like uh, Carl Jung would would talk about um, the the soul, um, you know, having a, a sort of unique purpose. You know, like there's there's a unique flowering or unique expression of of each being that um, you know that we're playing in in this yeah. game. So so some, somehow within the dance structure, it's like there there's this energy that comes alive to create these films. And, you know, so, so the, there's this interesting paradox, like, like I'm not, I'm not identified with that, that character. Um, and the more, the more I'm sort of aware of the truth of who I am, then it's like that energy is just free to do its thing. So the, so the character is, you know, you could call that karma or, um, you know, the programming, whatever, whatever it is. That is, you know, it's it's no different than a, um, an an acorn is programmed to be an oak tree, you know, and it's yeah. gonna, it's going to go through that. You know, you give it the right conditions, it's going to grow into an oak tree, and it's the same with the the character. You know, given the right conditions, you know, the Dan character creates a, its movies and does its thing, and 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 is is um, you know, there's a there's something that is just naturally flowing through for that to happen. But, you know, but there's not this sense that, you know, I have to awaken the world or I have this, this mission, you know, people think like, because the awaken the world website, you know, I must, I must have like some sort of, uh, you know, zealotry or, or, or missionary kind of, uh, um, yeah, you know, yeah. impulse to to try and liberate people and and all of that, and it's actually not that at all. Um, to me, it's just the 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 greatest sense of um, flow and and ease is is when the you know the avatar is able to be in those conditions to do whatever it is it's been sort of made to do. So um, right. so it's in in some ways it's just sort of a a, a selfish thing because it, it is the thing that creates the, the, the most aliveness and the greatest sense of ease. Mm -hmm. And it, and it happens to be something that is, um, uh, you know, connected to this Samadhi, which, which is the recognition of the truth that, that, um, that, that self that is, is, you know, it's, it's like this coming into alignment but the coming into alignment is a recognition of the truth that that you know what we are is not separate. It, so so somehow there's there's this higher knowingness at times where there are these openings where there's there's direct experience that 
you know, what we are is, you know, the, the, when, when we use these words like you and I, you know, there's yeah. a separation, but, but the truth is, um, you know, in those direct experiences, which we, we can't, no one can tell you, you know, I could say things like, you know, every, everything is one, but, um, but to me, the, you know, there's more of those openings, the more uh, in alignment we are with our, with that sort of inner direction. Yeah. Yeah. Then something you mentioned just now, right? Like the language itself is being designed as um, to have like the polar opposites, right? Or, or like of like two ends, right? Like you and I, us versus them, good versus bad. And yeah. also you mentioned the world or the matrix, it seems to be designed for us to be get literally get caught up in the game or in the dance, right? So why is that is do you think that this whole world that our our life essentially is a test yeah that so yeah that's a really good good question just <coughs> sorry yeah. yeah no worries of course yeah so um you know what's coming up for me around that so in in hinduism they have you know, the idea of, um, you know, when we, when we recognize, you know, Shiva as, you, you know, they, Shiva, they use that for, um, you know, yeah. referring to the, the true self, like the, the highest realization. So to me, you know, there's, there's these three aspects, the, the Trinity and, and to, to really, um, understand what this this matrix is i think we like we can use that as sort of a, a way of speaking about it so i think you know if you if you if you think about um this whole experience of of becoming identified with a character it's like we're we're going into this matrix if we if we didn't become identified then it wouldn't be much of a game at all you know there there would be if we just knew we were the one source the whole time, um, you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, believe that I'm this character. So it's, it's almost like there are these stages. And so there, there's, um, you know, in, in the Hindu, Hindu tradition, you know, there's, there's Ish, Ishvara, which is a combination of, you know, there, there's, there's Purusha, pure consciousness, Prakriti, mm -hmm which is the whole field of changing form, the matrix mm -hmm. itself, you know, and then Ishvara is the awakened um, intelligence that, or, mm -hmm. or, or one that um, like the, the logos, or you, you could say the mind of God that wakes up within um, these, these two polarities. So you have pure awareness, you know, you have the, the, um, phenomena and then and then the the sense of i am awake in in that you know so you could call that our buddha nature or christ consciousness or you know the logos whatever whatever word you want to give that mm -hmm. and for that birth for that hap you know awakening to mm -hmm. happen within the game um it's like I think we have to go through these these stages. So there there has to be in order to awaken from the character, there has to be a sense of being that I, that false I. Mm -hmm. And and so this is the interesting thing I've I've seen with um, self inquiry is um, you know the self inquiry that that we do um, it doesn't work for everyone. You know it's like if if someone doesn't have a well-developed self structure that's sort of relatively stable and a psyche that that is you know well developed um it's very difficult to awaken actually from that because there it's you know it's like it's not cohesive so so the um at a certain point the the conditioned self you know in in the process of awakening there there's quite often um you know, fear that arises. There's this sense of of um, letting go of control, 
Um, so it, but all of these things are sort of dependent on a functioning um, self structure. So, so to me, there's 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 an actual evolutionary process within the conditioned self that um, so that this vehicle that we're in, um, you know, really has to be taken care of. You know, it's like like in uh, the 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 Bible, like the um, you know the esoteric um, parts of the Bible, like the Gospel of Thomas and these Gnostic gospels they they refer to the body as the temple you know the body we this this body is um something that um you know it can it can obscure if we're in this body it will obscure the truth so um so there is a a sense in which we we have to sort of purify or the body of these these samskaras and allow it to develop in a way that it it becomes a, a a vessel that allows that awareness to just shine through. Right. And my understanding is that it's almost like the journey of Christ. He must come into this world and um, like to, to come here to play. And uh, for example, or in this case, like us, right? Like, like, uh, one has to grow up and learn the things, learn the rule, rules of the society and um, be part of society. And then in a way later on to be like graduate or awaken from that role and to realize who she or he truly is. And, 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 and that just, in a way, that is the process and that is, that is how it is. Yeah, yeah, and if you that's a great example. The you know Jesus, the man, the person, you know, yeah. went th went through a lot of hardships. You know, there were right. were times where he he cried out to God, you know, if you can spare me of this this yeah. journey, please do. You know, because <laughs> so like the the Jesus, I love how um, you know he's referred to as the Lamb of God. So, right. you know, so he's the sacrificial lamb. So right. the, the character, you know, Jesus, the character gets uh -huh. sacrificed so that that Christ, the logos can can awaken it within that that avatar. So, yeah. So that it's a that's a great example. And it, it's um, yeah, there's there's a you know, that that human journey is is part of it and, and part of the preparation for receiving the the consciousness so he you know he obviously did a good job purifying the vessel and and uh you know but but from from the little the condition self from the jesus character's point of view you know there it's that that suffering was was um you know very powerful very you know he went through the you know on the the hero's journey you know being yeah. crucified it's the perfect um you know the perfect metaphor you know for yeah. experiencing the the deepest um or the the darkest uh part of the the unconscious journey yeah right right mm -hmm. what was your part of journey like when um when when that happens, like in, in you you mentioned, like the the darkest part, right, which is like the crucifixion of the of this character. Yeah. So for me, the um, and and I I should mention as well, like so there's there's a lot of unfoldings on the path. You know, there's certain um, right. stages of the path. So I'm I would never c compare myself to Jesus or 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 like people you know like these great masters like Ramana Maharshi I I've I've I know enough about the the path to know what I still don't know as well. So okay. there there's a there's a level of um you know like Ramana would would say um there's a point in the journey where the the mind um, sort of dissolves into the heart or there's there's um in in zen you know they talk about the awakening of the heart mind the awakening of the logos the the christ consciousness you know so so there's a, a dissolving away that can happen um 
and you know like sometimes we, we can get i've i've had glimpses of the the Turia state where i'll get a little a good run of of Turia where where there's a you know living in this this presence living from source um but it's for me not permanently established so there's a Turia tita which is the right. you know that's the highest um you know or the sahaja samadhi this right. is the highest samadhi so um so that is you know something when i talk about it it's i'm talking usually about these other teachers and and um it's not something that has happened yet in this journey or if it will happen who knows but um so so i, I just wanted to make that clarification um, yeah, of course. and but for me so so the you know, at the Zen Center, that was sort of uh, um, creating these these conditions of no escape, which is it's like a self crucifixion almost. To me, that's yeah. how, how I describe it sometimes. Right. So, so you're you're in this situation where you know the the pain, all the samskaras, all the stuff in the unconscious is is coming up, and the there's a desperation that arises within the the conditioned self. It's like like it's got something has to give, you know, so, so either either I have to get out of here or or leave or die or something, something yeah. has to get. And, and so so the resistance and the, the suffering and the pain reaches 100 percent. And there's there's yeah. um, so that that conditioned self, something happens in that where there's an alchemy you know, where there is, it is like a death. It is like a, a die before you die. So yeah. for me, that, that happened on a cushion. You know, that was my right. um, putting, not, not even, if, I, if my ego had known what I was jumping into, uh, you know, in that, it probably wouldn't have done it. You know, it right. probably wouldn't have signed up for that. But, mm -hmm. um, but it, was, it was still chasing that remembered experience from, um, you know, from previous experiences. So, um, so is the, this interesting thing where, you know, even when we have an awakening quite often, the, the ego will come back and, and say, you know, I did it, I awakened that, but it's, but it's actually, but it's actually, you know, it's in the failure of, of that little self that, um, you know, somehow there's, there's this, this energy becomes free of the conditioned pattern and this you know we can't we can't make that happen we can put ourselves in these conditions but um when that flip happens i you know i've seen it at our at our retreats you know over and over and it's it's like the more we're trying to make it happen um you know the farther we get from it so so there's this this wisdom or or getting the cosmic joke where the one the one who is trying to make it happen really has to be you know crucified or give up or there's all different ways that the the conditioned mind can sort of fail so right you know at the retreats it's like we t tire the mind out you know the mind will yeah. get we we do this dyad process and eventually the mind can get so tired and confused that it sort of drops away um you know so but we can also do it through um, just a, a wisdom or understanding that, you know, the mind can't do it. The, the mind can actually come to know its proper place. So the mind can, can realize, you know, this, all of this efforting is futile and, and I can, you know, actually just stop that, stop, give, give it up. And, and um, you know, the, the mind can move from that, um, you know the master to the servant position basically yeah yeah wow it's incredible and uh, well we'll definitely have to talk about the retreats and and, and dyad process and uh, self-inquiry it's it's all fascinating um for in this moment, I guess because probably this character of Jazzy always um, likes to or enjoy taking shortcuts, right? And something you have mentioned before, right? If um, that, so anyway, uh, Maharaji named Karoli Baba, who was Ramdas' guru, once he said, 
LSD or magic mushrooms are the medicine of the yogis. And they could be helpful when taken in a quiet environment with your mind focusing on God. Yet, it is like having the darshan of Christ for only a few hours. But it will be better to become Christ yourself, which I think in your language means that realizing your true nature, right? Yeah. So what's your... Um, yeah, then I'm sure you heard of like heroic dose, right? Which is taking five grams above mushrooms. And what's, yeah. what's your take on that? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I've, I've, yeah, I've gone, I've come full circle in several circles actually with, with um, psychedelics and, and uh, antigens. So at the beginning of my path, I was, I was very, you know, into the sort of the Buddhist approach, you know, that we, it, we need to do it ourselves. Yeah. And, and um, these are, um, you know, just going to be chasing states or, you know, um, there, it's not necessary. But then at a certain point in my journey, um, you know, the, I, I often operate when, when synchronicities start to come, um, it seems like there's something trying to tell me you know, something that I need to know, um, you know, for me, the entheogens at a certain point, it became very clear. Um, I, I had a lot of fear actually around, um, you know, using things like, like, uh, the mushrooms or ayahuasca or, right. um, boga was another one for me, um, which right. for out of all of the entheogens, I find it's the most yeah. useful as a meditation tool. Um, so I realized at a certain point, you know, th there's there's definitely fear in within the the Dan structure around these things, and and even though you know, so some people some people you know they naturally go after those things. Right. Um, for me, it was the opposite. I was I had okay. resistance to it, and and I had um, beliefs, you know, that the it's a distraction or a detour on the path. So I had to let go of all of that in order to um, acknowledge the um, synchronicities and, and things that were happening in my life. So, um, and, and I, I realized, um, you know, these, these, these things can take you into a, like a Savakalpa Samadhi state, right. all, all of yeah. these things. So Savakalpa Samadhi is, is the, you know, the union, it's the, the peak state where it's like you're right. one with everything, you yeah. know, yeah. Which is which is not the same as recognizing your true nature because yeah. Savakalpa Samadhi, these peak states are always impermanent. You know, so that's what I that's what I experienced early on. That was my first experience right. was this this union. You know, being yeah. one with everything, um, but it's always temporary. So, um, so it, it, there, it's amazing to give you a taste. You know, that's one half of the truth is that you're okay. you're everything you know yeah. you're one with everything you can have direct experience with all of these these entheogens you can do you know 10 grams of mushrooms and you're it's very you're absolutely everything you know it's yeah, like the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the veil is is completely dropped and the reducing yeah. valve is completely dropped the doors of perception open and all of that so um so you know that that's great, and there. I think I feel like there's, um, you know, with with the purification of samskaras, there's there's huge work that can be done there. There are huge insights that we can get. Um, these these plant teachers, there's there's an, it's like they're they're put on this planet as you know little gifts almost to to connect us with um, you know parts of ourself that are deeply unconscious and. There, there are aspects um, within the self structure that are very difficult to um, realize just by sitting on a cushion. Um, so to me, there, there's, you know, on my path, it, there was a huge benefit to that. And I've seen that, you know, quite often for people at a certain stage on the path, um, these, these plant teachers will show up, you know, when people are really ready to do the, the deep purification to face their fear, to see truly what is in the unconscious. And um, sometimes they, um, you know, the spirit, the discoveries of, um, you know, blowing the doors wide open to experience higher worlds, all of that, 
um, it can it can rad radically um, change one's sort of view of what all of this is. Um, so so to me, there you know that's half of half of what needs to happen on on the the journey. Um, Right. And and the other, you know, so that's that's coming into a savakalpa samadhi and union, one oneness with everything. Um, we can yeah. through that experiencing love, you know, divine love, all of that. Um, so that's the the beauty and the you, you know the the experience of of life. And then the other half is to realize that we're nothing, you know, to that we're, there's we are this this primordial awareness that is actually free of all of that, that doesn't need any of that. There's a, there's a peace, you know, that of, of abiding as awareness that is not contingent on, on any phenomena or any state. Um, and it's, right. it's, so that awakening is, you know, in some ways makes, makes all of that almost irrelevant or redundant. Um, when we awaken from that. So, so this is sort of the paradox is, you know, in, on, you know, on the path, it's like we, there, if we're, we're open, then we can allow this unfolding and this beautiful richness of life. You know, to me, the entheogens are taking in, us into deep, direct experience of life, yeah. you know, and, and that's, that's the, the juice of life, the richness, um, you know, and then, we want to experience that without attachment um, and with, without um, chasing these experiences. And yeah. um, otherwise we'll, we, you know, we become identified and then we, we fall into uh, suffering. Um, so, you know, this is the being fully in the, the world, fully experiencing everything directly without the identification. And th so those are the, the two, aspects i think we 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 need to work with and if we don't um you know have that recognition of who we are then um you know these entheogens can become um you know just another prison or another thing that the the ego will use to seek states and will will you know because they they can be very blissful so um we we can just end up um yeah just endlessly ch chasing states right right mm -hmm. absolutely and i'm just gonna shut uh there's yeah a, a, absolutely, absolutely yeah, yeah. Here. yeah 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 for sure yeah no worries no worries There we go. That's better. Nice, nice. Yeah. Otherwise, it's um, sun is shiny today in uh, Ontario. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, we haven't seen a lot of it in Canada in the last few months. Oh, oh, gotcha. I see. Well, hey, then one of these days we uh, we got to have you out here in uh, in uh, in the Mediterranean Sea uh, in Barcelona. Um, maybe that would be maybe amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so what you just mentioned, right? Like how the um, psychedelic experience that type of samadhi is only half of the the truth, right? Which is um, to put in even more plain and simple language that um, perhaps myself or the people around me, we had discussion about okay. What is it like the day after or a week after, after, for example, a heroic dose, right? And it's clear to me that I, I, I believe this is what you're saying, which is only the half. That's why the psychedelic is only half of the work, which is, okay, had the experience, but then it will, like you mentioned, it will quickly go away. But then I realized some of the patterns that I have that will still come back and come back Maybe in uh, whether it's a day or two days or, uh, for example, let's say um, um, diet, you know, some kind of diet preferences or or some other things, right? It will just come back right away. Is, is this what you're mentioning? Like only, um, yeah. 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 The question is, you know, here and now, you know, what what is what is freedom here and now in this moment? 
you know so if it's not here now then what what is it that we're doing you know it's to, if it's just a temporary experience you know and yeah. and yeah there can be um an unburdening you know for a period of time like with a boga um you know doing an aboga flood dose for example um sometimes people will get a beautiful peaceful opening for weeks afterwards wow. you know but but there but there has to be a recognition of the truth of who we are you know aboga will help you to see the truth you know in those experiences um but we but we have to be willing to accept the truth as well so if we okay. you know so if we just go back into the life you know yeah. in the same pattern you know like it these these entheogens will create an opening in our life it's like the the pattern of me the the me that i'm identified with you know stops for a period of time and there's an opening um and then you know there's a possibility for a new energy to come through and and to become grounded in that truth to recognize you know how i was living my life before you know what was i chasing what was i going after where was my energy going and if i just fall back into that again you know the same pattern then you know it's endless so then then it's like you know a month later i have to go do another meditation yep. retreat or another entheogen or whatever create another opening but if i don't get it it it's that's endless there it's an endless chasing so so there's a recognition that you know the i the true self is is um already free you know this this awareness that we're we're or this peace that we're seeking that everybody is seeking no no one will ever be at peace until they find out the truth of who they are so mm -hmm. so that you know that awareness is always here that's you know the revelation upon awakening is you know how did i miss this you know it's like the awareness is just always here so so there's no need to seek and and this is this is the fundamental delusion of the mind is that there's some state or something to seek in the future or you know some something that some conditions that have to be in place in order to be free or in some samadhi state but the the true samadhi state is is a, just awakening to what is here and now and it's you know that which remains in in waking dreaming and deep sleep as well you know whatever whatever is present through all of these changing states within the self structure the, the the knowing deep presence you know the ground of existence is is it and that's the only liberation you know so so we can you know i've seen people with um psychedelics and you know at the beginning it it you know these peak experiences are life changing there and mm -hmm. and i think it there's huge value there i think it can it can create a um huge transformation and acceleration but um but if we keep chasing those states um you know it can actually do the opposite of what we wanted to it can empower the ego um so that you know the the ego will will um you know be sort of supercharged um with with these experiences and and it it can um it can actually go the other way for for some people as well so i think you know using them for what they're meant to be used for you know to create an opening um to create a a space in life so that we can see the patterns that are in play you know that to me is is the value and and not to you know be seeking higher and higher um uh, you know experiences um th not that we should you know push those things away i think they're they're beautiful and we experience them fully but um but just recognize that you know when the ego gets involved and starts going after them right so my understanding and and i think this is not only not only applying to like those who are seeking for um let's say a heroic dose or psychedelic experience but potentially like um 
that we all probably once were or came across a lot of people like that on the spiritual path. Someone who's always always going to the next meditation or um, yoga retreat, right? Always. They're always like, you know, seeking this kind of experience. So my understanding is that if we really come down to like step one, step two, step three, like if there's such thing, it will be um, first step is that, okay, sure, maybe do that. Um, feel free to whether it's heroic dose or a meditation retreat. But then after that, and that which is something creates an opening, right? And the second step is to be aware of, okay, now I can take a step back because I break my pattern. Now I can see my some of my pattern, for example, diet or some other things or attachment of um, overstimulation, social media or TV shows, entertainment. And that will be step number two. And step number three will be just um, just dropping them, right? Just like letting go. And uh, so that's release the energy that is in your language, the energy that's stored in those patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And and I think there there's a... You know, like like for for different people, it'll be different as well. You know, right. I I think, yeah. um, you know, for me, there like with the boga, it felt like it had a job to do. You know, mm -hmm. to to it, mm -hmm. it's like a boga had a a mission to you know activate the the inner mechanism and you know fully clear the the third eye area and right. rewire and all of this stuff. So right. so we may you know there there. It's, I think it's different for everyone, you know, for, sure. for me, there, there was like, now I, I don't, I'm, I don't feel like at this point in my life, um, a boga is not, um, necessary anymore. It's yeah. not, it's not like there, my higher self and all the, the synchronicities of the outer world aren't, aren't, aren't putting it in front of me all the time now to investigate it or to go deeper into it. I feel like now what what it offered me is now available just in my own body and and um because it's really just connecting you with you so yeah, there's yeah. there's a rewiring process that that has happened yeah. there that um it's not it's not as important now as it as it was it felt like it was an accelerator and it was there was all this stuff happening within the self structure um you know so um, yeah, and it's you know I so yeah I would I would never say you know sometimes things still come on my path you know I have a friend who he's he's like a almost like an alchemist with with plant medicine and uh, he's always offering me stuff and and usually usually I say no and but the one one day um, he offered me um, like where where we we are in Ontario here there there are these mushrooms that grow um, they're the Amanita muscaria they're the little little uh, um, ones with the uh, red and white dots the like the right, little right, right. Smurf muff mushrooms or the yeah and and uh, so he he um, you know, offered me this cocktail, and uh, I think it was like like eleven grams of 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 all these different types of mushrooms and, and right. LSD, and and for some reason I said yes the, the one day, and it was just like the you know the entire self structure just was completely obliterated in that experience. Right. Right. But but my but what what I realized was, you know, the awareness was just there. Right. So even in, yeah. in the middle of this, this crazy obliteration, blown wide open experience, yeah. it's, it's just awareness yeah. um, there. And it's just another level of phenomena that, that's arising. And it's for me that that experience was a sort of shift in, in my understanding where, you know, it really is, it's all available right now you know through yeah. awareness it's just you know when we when we have a capacity to just unhook from the mind um you know it's all available here we can we can open the the veil at right. any time you know these right. are they're almost like permission slips to to do yeah. what, we, what we can do just on our own yeah absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. um quick question personal curiosity so when um you you know um let's say let's say doing um psychedelics um in this case like some, something similar to like a heroic dose or um mushroom cocktail 
do you lay down or you actually sit on the mat? Because, you know, sitting on the mat could be sometimes could be quite overwhelming in those states. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some t I, I wouldn't say I have one thing, you know, like the, yeah. the experience that I um, just described, I, I did an, end up lying down for it. Um, and then at a certain point, um, like in, in the peak of it, uh, it's like awareness just kind of woke up and, yeah. and I just got up, you know, and, and <laughs> went, went outside and just kind of sat under a tree. So right. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say there's yeah, any, any magic formula yeah, yeah, yeah. or any, anything yeah. in particular, but um, for a long period of time, like sitting with a boga, um, just meditating, um, like on a cushion, um, was something that I was drawn to for a period right. of time. Right, it just right. seems like um, a boga in particular is inviting you into stillness. So um, for me, that was an amazing meditation tool. Um, but again, you know, now it's, it's um, you know, that, that's whatever opening was there um, is, is available now. So right. it's, it's not right. really, it's not, not that it ever was necessary, you know, but I think yeah. these things yeah. just, just come on the path when, and we can either say yes or no, and, and there yeah. can be an acceleration. Yeah, yeah, understood, understood. Well, let's talk about the newer tool, which is uh, the dyads. Um, personally, obviously, this is the self-structure talking, or maybe this is exactly the point, but my self-structure feels like I, this character of Jazzy, don't really get it, the dyads. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that's exactly the point of just for a self-structure to not to get it. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so the so the dyads. Maybe I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what they are, yeah. just in case there's there's people who don't know what they are. So, um, so yeah, so the dyads are self inquiry where we're we're sitting with a, a partner and we're inquiring into who we are. So so the idea is to um, we want to have a direct experience of our true nature. And to me, um, so you're so one person is a witness, um, the other is doing the inquiry, and then you switch back and forth. And so one one person will be looking into the other's eyes, and and will say, "Tell me who you are." And then the person who's doing the inquiry has um, you know an intention to directly experience their true nature in that moment. And and to the conditioned mind, you know that's confusing right like the the little the little mind you know if someone says you know tell me who you are and then the instruction is you intend to directly experience your true nature which means not not via the mind you know so so the mind in that moment in that moment of inquiry the mind is the invitation is the mind to drop away to have that direct experience and then, um, and then the, the technique then is, you know, either in that moment, you'll, you'll either have a direct experience of your true nature, you know, with that invitation from your partner, or some phenomena will come up within the mind and body to be cleared. And so, so, um, so whatever comes up, then we share that with the partner. And that could be anything. It could be, um, you know, past memories, experiences, um, emotions, you know, anything that is in the unconscious starts to come to the surface to be cleared when we, when we have that in intention to do that inquiry. Um, so a lot of it, you know, most of it, like especially, you know, when we, we do it for days sometimes at the, the center and it's a clearing process, you know, whatever we, right. we, we have this, this deep yearning or, or wanting to experience our true nature but it's always the false self that comes up to be cleared, you know, for the longest time until it's not until we were able to have that direct experience. Um, right. Yeah. So, um, so the, the conditioned mind, you know, the hardest thing for the conditioned mind is, you know, in that, in that moment where we're invited to directly experience our true nature, that conditioned mind has to, 
learn to get out of the way, you know, learn not to seek or do something in that moment to try and find our, our true nature. And so eventually, you know, if we've done it enough, eventually it'll get exhausted or, or um, you know, it'll feel like it's failing. Um, it'll get confused, um, tired, um, annoyed, you know, all of these things come up within the conditioned self. And eventually, once it's failed fully, you know, and, and is in this sort of open, you know, beginner's mind state, you know, not knowing mind state, then those are the perfect conditions to um, have a direct experience of our, our true nature. Yeah, so that, so that conditioned self really has to, um, you know, it goes through a process of sort of letting go and it, and it can be excruciating, um, you know, at, at a, a retreat where we, we do this from, you know, six in the morning till 11 at night continuously. And, and it's, it's um, you know, it's like madness for the, the conditioned mind. And it goes through this, these different forms of resistance. Um, and um, it's just part of the process. It's, um, you know, and it's, it is different for different people. Sometimes the, the core block, you know, will be, um, you know, tiredness can come up. The, the mind will just generate this tiredness or sleepiness. Other times there'll be like an anger where it's like, this is stupid. This is, this is really retarded, this whole investigation process. And, and like this can't possibly lead to anything. And, or, or um, yeah, all, all different, different forms of resistance, you know, right. or there could be or an emotional. Bored, right. Yeah. Yeah. Boredom yeah. or, yeah. but, but there's also, um, you know, it's an interesting technique because there, there are a lot of clearings that happen as well. So sometimes, you know, when, when an emotion comes up, you know, sometimes the, there could be something from childhood or, um, you know, something that needs to be cleared. And there's, there's like an unburdening that happens, like a catharsis experience. And these, these little clearings or sometimes big clearings happen. And when those things start to happen, there is a lightening up that happens within the self-structure. Even before uh, a, a, an awakening happens, there's, there's, people generally get a sense, the more of this that they do, that something important is happening. There, there is an unburdening that happens and, and you can feel it viscerally that, that something, you know, is being cleared. And, and once, once those, those little clearings start to happen, usually people are really on board with it at that point. Then usually they realize, okay, this is, there's something real here. This is, this is actually, you know, I, I don't, maybe I don't really understand what's happening, but I can feel things are, are shifting and being cleared and there are openings and, you know, these en energies that are being freed up are, are starting to create the sense of aliveness in the moment. So, um, so the, the technique is sort of self reinforcing in that way. You know, the, usually the first day at a retreat is the hardest to get through because there, there's the most resistance and there, yeah. there hasn't been really breakthroughs yet. So, so the mind is, is, um, you know, it needs to be sort of, uh, broken through for, for the first part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well then just like what you have mentioned in the beginning, that sounds awesome. I want in where can myself or the listeners out there to do or practice more diets? Yeah. So, so, um, I, before the, um, call started here, I, I was mentioning, um, we're in the process of creating something that is, um, it's going to be like a web application where, um, it's going to be the, the I am app where people can go on there and connect with a dyad partner. And, and um, the idea um, that I had, so we at the Samadhi Center over the last several years, we've been sort of keeping track of who has had Kensho experiences. So they've directly experienced the benefit of um, the dyads. And so we have about 40 people who have, um, you know, an interest in, in, um, facilitating 
um, you know, retreats and, and, and doing, um, you know, dyad facilitation. So eventually what I want to have is, um, an online app where people can go on there and, and, um, engage in intensives on an ongoing basis and, or, or just do it daily, you know, if, if, or if they're doing a retreat as part of their retreat, they can just go on there, get a dyad partner at any time, you know, and, or schedule a time on there. So, um, so that, that will be one way. Um, there, there is, um, on the awaken the world community site right now, um, there, there's, um, uh, a lot of resources on there right now. So, this this technique comes from the the Charles Burner Society world. Um, so Charles Burner was the one who came up with this technique. He was um, sort of a yogi and and a Zen um, teacher who came across um, dyads within the uh, psychology world, and he sort of merged everything together. So, so in, in the late 60s, early 70s, he was really honing and developing this technique. So um, all of those resources and pointers are on the Awaken the World site to connect with the Charles Berner groups that are out there. So they, they refer to these intensives as they call them enlightenment intensives. And so if, if you come across an enlightenment intensive, you know, this is, that's the language they use in the Charles Berner world. Right, and, right. and they're basically doing the same thing. I, I just have, have um, you know, my um, love for the teachings of Ramana Maharshi and Zen. And so I, I throw other things into the mix, you know, when I'm, when right. I'm facilitating and I, I use different pointers. Um, but we will we'll be doing, um, like in June, we'll be doing um, a, a seven day I am retreat. Mm -hmm. um online and yeah. we'll be we'll so we use zoom and go into the the like as, as you've experienced the, the breakout yeah. rooms and everything and um so we'll we'll be doing that in june um so that is something people can sign up on on awaken the world um uh but if you want a physical retreat um the, you know the charles burner world i you know there are different facilitators they facilitate in different ways but there's a lot of resources we can connect people with and okay. um, maybe on this video i can give you the link to yes, there please. Please, yeah. there you know yeah. at the end we can we can put that out yeah. there for people as well yeah. um and the the samadhi center of course where i am right now um yeah. this year we're, we're taking a break from physical retreats um to um, work on um, a lot of the creative pro uh, projects and getting all these yeah. different things in place. But um, next year, um, we'll be resuming the uh, physical retreats as well. Here. Right, right. Do you, know, again, the mind always wants to know, do you know roughly which which season that we could expect to uh, be at the center physically, more or less? Next year? Um, yeah, yeah, probably... <laughs> Probably around this time next year. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So probably like a year from now. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we'll be, yeah. I'm, and, you know, part of it is, um, you know, I've been really just sort of following my own energy around all of this. Yeah. Yeah, so true. I don't know for sure. You know, it's interesting how, yeah. you know, with the center, there's a lot of moving parts with having a team yeah. to, yeah. you know, manage these retreats and everything. It seems like everything is shifting into place for that to happen next year. But the truth is I, I never really know. And, and I'm yeah, really, you know, it's, it was interesting this year. I, I was building the retreat schedule and all of that to do a, another year of retreats. And it really became clear um, energetically that, you know, that putting a template into place was, you know, there was a lot of creative possibility that was swirling around and, yeah. and it really felt constrictive. And so, so I, I was, you know, I, I didn't feel right to put that template into place this year. And so next year, I have to feel it out. It feels like it's yeah. moving in that direction, but, yeah. but also the way the world is right now and the way everything is flowing, we, I, I never really know 
what things are right, going to look right, like. Right, 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 right. So I suspect that's going to happen, but I'm, yeah, I've, I've been wrong before. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, um, you're just honoring how you feel in this moment, which is, um, I think this is going to be quite an interesting question for a lot of audience out there. You mentioned quite a few times on this podcast so far that, you know, honor your feeling and you have to feel it out. So when you mentioned that, like, how exactly you feel do you feel feel like in enthusiasm towards a project um like like you know i also imagine aliveness and um what well, could you describe that feeling a little bit more yeah yeah and, and i would also describe it in terms of the contraction that that comes when things start to go off Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or out of a sense of ease as well. So, right. you know, so for, for me, um, you know, there, there's, um, yeah, like certain, certain projects, there's like, um, you know, like the, the film that I'm working on, I'm working on Awakening Mind Part Two. And, and it just seems like, um, you know, when I, when I meditate, it's like the, the information and downloads are, are just happening. And, and there's, there's like, a, um, you know, when I when I sit in front of the computer, you know, working on it, um, there's just an energy there. I'm, there's not a tiredness, but there's a sense of aliveness, and um, it's it's a, a beautiful feeling. It's it's like an engagement and and an exploration that's happening, and it's like there's an energy. Just it's it's like the everything comes alive within the mind body, and and um, there's just a sense of flow. Whereas if I were to, um, you know, work on something that, you know, like say, you know, not that I would do this, but, you know, like in, in, you know, 25 years ago or 30 years ago, I was working in the television industry on, you know, kind of formula shows that, um, you know, we're just, I was doing it because it was kind of cool and to make money. Right. So, so if I, if I were to, you know, re-engage with something like that it would feel totally off i'd be you know there's no aliveness or energy around it and the the energy would quickly um it'd be like pulling the plug on on the energy and it just wouldn't happen you know or if it did if the ego for some reason wanted to do that and was determined to do it then it would create a pathological state within the mind body it would there would be an imbalance and probably would get sick or something like that and you know life like there would have to be a course correction at some point yeah so so to me it's just it's just a very simple you know what what feels alive we know what feels like there's a a sense of ease and and flow and you know this the same thing with the um retreat center last year we had a beautiful year of, of retreats it was in the flow but um you know, a lot of things started happening, like certain um, people who were living at the center, things were happening in their life, which shifted them away onto a different part of the path. So so then, um, you know, the energies were shifting. It's, it just seemed like um, in order to maintain the pattern that was in play, it was getting harder and harder. It was becoming right. effortful. And, and, and it... Yeah at a certain point I had to either kind of, it seemed like, you know, the river was going in this direction. And, and if, if we wanted things to continue the way they'd been going, that was like a different direction. So, so it's like, I had to, had to at some point say, okay, the river is going this way. Let's just go with that direction. And, and, and so, you know, in, in, there was a part of the mind that was like, no, I, I, I want that to happen. You know, but I had to had to kind of drop all those expectations and l- let go of what had been happening in the past and just see where this new river is flowing. Right. Absolutely. So that, yeah, and it's it's always unknown. That's the thing. Like you know, yeah. if there if something new is going to arise, obviously we we have to let go of what's known um, mm-hmm. for that to flourish and and yeah. come. So. That's, that's also a fun part of life, right? That uh, childlike, like spon- spontaneous, right? Like maybe okay, work work on something, and but no longer feeling feeling it, then yeah, something that's you know that that 
might be better, you know, or more impactful and uh, having a lot more fun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. It was, this, this was, that was it exactly. Like it was, a um, for me last year, the thing that actually made me alive, the most alive inside was not knowing, you know, I, when I, when I, when I like mentally would think about putting the whole template into place and everything, there, there was like a, um, you know, right. it was, it was known and it was, it was right. familiar. Um, but, but as soon as I would entertain the possibility of not knowing, it was yeah. like, wow, that's exciting. Right. You know, there's an aliveness around that. And so I right. just kind of went with that. And and my yeah. partner, uh, Lilla as well, she felt the same thing. And she, right. she has, um, a very good inner direction as well. Probably she's more, mm-hmm. um, more feminine, obviously than me. So, so there's more energy there. And in some ways yeah. her compass, I would say, it, I, yeah. I pay attention to her compass more than my own because she's, right. she's more fine tuned to, um, the movements of energy in the world. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And once it, just share just like some background story um between me and the center like also personally for me as well right i remember i had i was probably a sign up for in-person retreat it has to be like two years ago or something and it yeah, took me yeah. forever to to get a visa to figure out logistics because i was moving and this and that and then was i was about to give up and then um you all like post post the online retreat and then sign up right away so that was incredible as yeah. well yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's interesting how things play out, and yeah, yeah, indeed. yeah. And I'm I, those online retreats. I'm I'm very excited about the results that happened in January with that retreat. You know, it was a bit of an experiment, and and um, to me, it it seems like the results that happen in the physical retreats and the results that happened online. There's not, you know, I think the physical retreats for sure. There may be a bit more of a right. container yeah, there, so. but but um, overall, I was I was blown away with with what unfolded for people at yeah. those retreats, and yeah. it seemed yeah. like like the same conditions can be created if people are very serious and and Absolutely. take take those seven days and remove themselves from from all their activities. Um, it's right. just the same possibility as doing the physical retreats. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm absolutely, and, and also shout out to you and um, your partner and your team for making like um, the opportunity available for a lot of people from over the world, right? Maybe someone from Europe, sure, is doable, or from Asia, you know. Then we're talking about thirteen-hour flights, and uh, it just make that so available for so many people. That's truly incredible. So, um, and and the the yeah. technology now is amazing. Like yeah. on on Zoom. You know, what blew me away was, you know, at the, the online retreat, we, we had people who didn't even speak English and Zoom was doing translation. Right. You, know, you had someone in, in Japan who only spoke Japanese, you know, but she was she was translating live, you know, with Zoom, which it, to me, it was it was like a miracle that that, um, right. you know, we could across these different uh, language barriers in doing all of this. So yes. yeah, it seems like yeah. this, this time in history, like we have these tools that is that's really, really making interesting yeah. possibilities available. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talking about language, this just came up. Um, then how do you feel about a Samadhi center in uh, Barcelona? <laughs> in Barcelona? Well, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, what, what excites me is, you know, like we've, we've had many people who, who've had awakenings at the center here. And what I would love to see is that, you know, people, um, start, start doing it in, in their part of the world, you know? So like, right. I'm, like to me, I, you know, just having one center and, and doing films and all this stuff is, is enough for a lifetime, you know? So, yeah, yeah. um, so I, I, I don't have a, you know, a sense of like franchising the, the Maddie <laughs> center or anything, but, but I, what I would love is, um, you know, people who, 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 you know, resonate and who have seen the benefit, right. um, start it and just do it, you know, run with it. And okay. that to me, like, I would, I would love to see, um, 
you know, in every every church and synagogue and mosque yeah. and in, you know, all these different, we, there's the infrastructure of all these religions is there, you know, they, these buildings and centers and places yeah. in the world, every city has churches. You know, what I would love to see is that um, they start to do this work, you know, do the inquiries so that people have direct experience, because to me, that's all of these religions at one point were supposed to be like pointers for, for mm -hmm. people back to their true nature. And if they can start operating that again, you know, if we can, if we could make that flip. So the, the core of whatever that religion is gets activated and they start operating again to reconnect people that I think would be the greatest catalyst in the world, you know, for, yeah. for yeah. the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I think I think you and your team delivered that message super clearly. The last, um, the the latest film, um, yeah, that that you put out is is yes, yeah, truly beautiful. Um, well, I still have quite a few questions here. Um, let's pick some uh, simple ones. Dan, sure. tell us, um, what's your morning and evening routine? <laughs> morning and evening routine. Well, it 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 changes, you know, like, like, um, you know, lately, um, you know, I like sometimes, um, it's like there, for me, there's, there's like an opening that happens early in the morning around 3am where, right. um, it feels like, um, an invitation into presence. You know, if I'm asleep, usually the body will wake up, um, and there's an invitation into, um, presence at that time um so that that sometimes shifts um you know if i'm if i'm doing uh retreats you know that's a whole different schedule so Absolutely. like living living in a retreat um environment is is um different um you know i i find if i'm doing a lot of um computer work um it's there's a certain balance a certain um engagement that that is happening on on you know with the matrix and it, it requires a certain grounding you know so even my diet might be a little different if i'm doing a lot of um that kind of mental work um right. there's a, a grounding that has to happen yeah. so heavier yeah. heavier diet um yeah. so it re really you know it it shifts there's yeah. there's a time yeah. where it's like yeah. you know a call to sadhana and deep practice right. and um you know so i i wouldn't say there's you know also i think like my my um like in in ayurveda the doshas um you know there there's a, a certain um kind of balance um within each character so my my character is a very vata kind of dosha which means um there's a lot of changeability there um so i i think you know at, at different times in life it it just you know there's a call to doing sadhana and and um you know doing deep practice so um, you right. know, for for years, I I was very vigilant and meticulous about meditating at a certain time, and yeah. and and I think it is important. You know, I think there was there was a point in my journey where it was like if I didn't do that, if I if I wasn't really meticulous every morning, getting up at the same time, you know, doing my practice, um, then my default was to go back to my old pattern and and it would it would get lost but at yeah. a certain point on on now i feel like that default has flipped where my default is to you know if 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 the the self structure starts to get um you know habit patterns developing the default is to meditate you know is to just drop into presence and and to you know engage in that purification so right. just I, I sort of trust you know the things will happen or um you know little will um lila and i will do a little meditation retreat or we'll start doing self-inquiry yeah. in evenings and we just feel like we'll we'll be drawn to it and so you know so some evenings we'll we'll watch movies or we you know we'll yeah. we'll be doing normal stuff our, our life is very normal 
But yeah. then at a certain point, it's like you will see, you know, oh, there's a, a habit pattern developing here where something's happening. Right. Let's let's do self inquiry, you know, in the evening, or let's just sit in in silence. You know, we sometimes we'll just look into each other's eyes as a meditation, and and um, just let the energy unfold. And so yeah. so for me, I, I think you know there is there is a real benefit to um, you know having like a a very regimented sadhana, and then um, and then you know as long as as long as you're um, default is to continue to purify the self structure. Then right. whatever whatever works, you know, to maintain that. Yeah, I think course. is it. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. so in short, is then now he gets up at three a.m. in the morning to meditate, but uh, it doesn't have to be for everybody, and everybody should honor what's, yeah. what's yeah. working for them, right? Yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. and you know the three a.m. like sometimes. I think, um, yeah, like just even even waking, like there, there's, it's like an aliveness um, or or an awakeness will sometimes find you. Like some, you know, at yeah. at the f- first part of the path, it was like, like there was, it was like I, the sense of yeah. I was trying to find yeah. awakeness, but but there there's a flip that happens where sometimes the awakeness, you know. It, it it just reveals itself over and over. It's the the stillness or or aware, awareness will start to find you as well. And I think when that when that flip happens on the path, there it's it's there's a there's less efforting. There it's like an effortless yeah ness that starts to come at a certain point. So getting to that point where that flip happens, I think is is really important and and that's you know the sadhana the vigilance all of that is is um you know it it is important that's really what i love to get people to is that point where they they have that awakening and they they recognize that awareness is ever present and and when that happens you know in in a sense you know it sounds sort of cliche but everything is is awakening or everything is meditation at that point then you know, so lying lying in bed you know awareness is present you know the mind drops off at night and and but but awareness can remain continuously so so it doesn't it doesn't really matter you know the, this is the the crazy thing is you know upon recognizing that awareness we realize that all the practices, you know, all the doings, yoga, whatever the the construct thinks meditation is, all of that was happening within the character, you know, but awareness was always just present. You know, so so it's it's the whole the whole sadhana thing is yeah. is really a paradox. So it's like we're we're you know, purifying this illusory self, you know, using these illusory techniques and practices until we, we recognize who, who was doing all that in the first place. So it's, it's like the illusion deconstructing itself in a way or, or creating an opening somehow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. It's incredible. Um, I got this one. So, uh, one of my favorites. So then let's say now is the end of the world and all, unfortunately, all your recordings, films are gone and wipes that as well. Um, if you could write on one little tiny piece of paper, like a sticky note, the <laughs> message, <laughs> You will um, like the people or prosperity, like people come after to see and read about you or your work. What would this message be? Mm. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. You know, okay. I think the most useful, like uh, how, how big would the sticky note be? Maybe like a few lines. I, yeah. I think, yeah. I think. It's like this big. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say. You know, don't believe your thoughts would be 
the first part of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so, um, and just, just recognize the awareness that is here and now. And I think those two things are enough. You know, I think like the the greatest teachers have all really reduced their, you know, Krishnamurti would, would, you know, say, you know, just be choicelessly aware without evaluating. You know, that's it. You know, so don't believe the thoughts. Don't get caught in the thoughts and and just recognize who you are in this moment. Who, who is here, who is aware right now. Right. Yeah. And just, you know, the, and yeah, I mean, I, I, that's the thing I could, you could always add to the sticky note, but, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. but there's, um, yeah, just recognizing that the ego is just resistance to what is. So, you know, just loving what is be okay with what is, you know, as soon as we resist what is, then we're in the mind. So, yeah, I would say, you know, be here now. Don't believe your <laughs> thoughts. Love what is or don't yeah. resist what is. Yeah, maybe three lines. Yeah. Yeah. Love what is. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Wow, this is incredible. Yeah. Nice. Um, early, earlier you mentioned that um, you and uh, you all watch movies sometimes. Have you seen, um, and, and perhaps I guess because you mentioned this before, you like uh, Star Wars and... Uh, have you seen Dune, the first or second one? I saw the first one. Yeah, yeah, and I I love that series. I love that, um, you know, there there, who yeah, the Frank Herbert is it that uh, the, the Arthur or the, the or, Arthur originally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. to me, there it there there's definitely um, some of these movies like Star Wars, the the original Star Wars as well. Um, you know, there's there's a real sense that whoever um, made it is was on the path for sure. Yeah. You know, there's a yeah. the hero's journey, and the, yeah. you know, there, there's a understanding of the the evolution of of the the character and all of yeah. that. So yeah, yeah. I, I love. I'm I'm like in in uh, Bancroft here. We have no movie theaters, so okay. I have to for to watch Dune too. I have to drive two hours to Ottawa and. We would have to stay overnight, so I, we we right. might actually do that because I, yeah. I, I yeah, would love yeah. to see it. Yeah, yeah, have yeah, you, yeah. Have you seen it? Or yeah, I, I've seen it. I've seen it. And actually, because I was chatting with my friend in Asia, I was um and and then here in Spain, sometimes like Monday or Wednesday, they have like special price tickets and uh, for like for like literally four ninety for one ticket, and it's incredible. And and I w- just watched it the second time uh, yesterday. Doing too. Oh, cool. Yeah, 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 so yeah it's yeah. really good. Yeah, 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 and 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 fortunately for me now in the moment it's like a literally seven minutes walk, and uh, so I, I saw yesterday. And yeah, the reason I brought it up was exactly like you're saying, right? Like for me, um, Dune, it's such a story about hero's journey, right? There's the denial, and you know, the how to say it, the voice from the outer world calling him or her for the adventure, and and that's why I found it so fascinating. Yeah, um, yeah. There's yeah. there's little little tidbits in there as well, and I remember yeah. the the old Dune movies as well. They were they were not uh, as well produced, uh, like low, lower budget yeah. for sure. But I yeah. love, yeah, like some of the parts where he, he puts his hand in, he's being tested and yeah. he has, has to have n- no attachment to the pain. And, you know, there, there's right. a, a lot of little little hurdles, you know, or little tests on the path that, that right. seem, uh, you know, very reflective of sort of what we what we encounter on the path as well absolutely so, yeah. absolutely mm-hmm. and and i'm not going to spoil it for you uh however there's something that today we talked about that when you watch dune 2 um it's 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 um it's a reflection it's a reflect it's going to be reflected in a movie and um um yeah but but you know maybe next time when we catch up we can uh, we can chat more about the the movies and yeah and things. yeah that'd be yeah. awesome yeah, yeah, certain movies, I think it, they're powerful to convey, even if people aren't like consciously, um, you know, understanding that it, it is a metaphor for their own journey, but it sort of permeates the the collective unconscious in a way, you know, like The, the Matrix yeah. was a good example as well. Wow, so this great. idea of, of, of awakening and out of, you know, that we're, there's this sort of simulation that, 
we become identified with. And yeah. you know, so now, you know, people, when, when you say, you know, the matrix or you, you, you talk about the, the simulation, people have an idea, whereas that was a very new concept when it right. came out. It wasn't right. easily grasped. It was kind of mind blowing yeah. at the time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so actually, everything coming full circle. So, the films that you and your team are making are actually having huge impact, and for now, past and future as well, right? Which is gonna, who knows? Maybe in ten, fifteen years, when people talk about the word samadhi, and you know, and and, and then it would, um, you know, it, it it would be just for sure, even for now. You and your team, you all have made the war samadhi have like become like a lot more how to say this concept and a lot more um, people have know about this now in the world. So that's mm. you know. So yeah, so. yeah. I think it, it for me it was it was interesting choosing that word in particular to you know really make the films you know the the samadhi films. There's something yeah. something about that. Sanskrit word and and the meaning I think that um, you know it, it we really we had very little concept you know in our society in in some ways um, you know the world the way it is now is the farthest from samadhi that it's you know in any recorded history you know because samadhi is is like continuous presence and. And now we have, you know, the world is the most fragmented, constant thinking and distraction. And so, so to me, it, it, you know, that, that word is like, you know, it's pointing to something that was known that was very ancient, that is sort of the counterbalance to the sort of condition of the world right now. It's what, it's what, you know, is, is sort of needed in in the world yeah, right yeah. now to yes. to bring yes. about awakening so yeah i i feel yeah. like there there's a power in that word word even though when i when i chose to to call the movies the samadhi films um i i, I thought you know it's a it's a sanskrit word nobody's going to resonate with it but for some reason it had a a resonance or a, something so, that like a mystery for people yeah. to start to yeah. explore yeah. Right. Um, curiosity. Um, what are some other uh, options at the time besides Samadhi? <laughs> uh, oh, for the for the film title. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I explored different things like like the Path of Awakening and okay. you, you know yeah. those, those types of titles. Yeah, for that, sure. Um, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Or or um, yeah. Where I, I I think at one point wanted to sort of tie it more into the matrix you know so right. so so you know like awakening from the matrix how to awaken right. yeah, yeah, to, yeah you yeah. know that type of thing so yeah. Yeah. okay 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 nice nice <laughs> well i want to say ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for listening and tuning into this very special episode however we must pay so much respect and me personally i'm so grateful for Dan, for your work and your team, which actually, you know, um, I don't want to sound like broken record because myself, every time when when we have interaction and when or when I'm in an online setting, that everybody says that. But uh, yeah, it's um, um, you, Dan, you really you put a lot of love into the world, and you are getting um, um, and there's so much love in the world for you as well. So I just want to say uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me and, and uh, for putting this out there as well. And, and for your own resonance, you know, I love that you, I, I love, you know, you come to a lot of the uh, online events and, and you, you have a, a real um, sort of pure investigation happening. And, and I, I just love the, the clarity and, and, um, and and that you're bringing it to the world as well so it's beautiful yeah, yeah. Thank, you. thank you thank you so much i i feel like i'm definitely you know um i yeah i i feel like i'm i'm also following my bliss right like um that i'm i'm also on the journey as well which is um i'm doing the work yet at the same time that i can feel that it's getting clearer and clearer for me right for example when we have this conversation 
like you know it's almost two hours or i could have like a podcast it, i guess even me and you could talk for four hours and it will feel like 20 minutes so this is definitely i feel like this talking it's definitely one of um at least in these moments where the energy lies for me so uh yeah, yeah I just want that's to say. amazing that's amazing yeah, yeah just keep going yeah, yeah let's keep absolutely. going awesome we'll do. We'll do. Yeah. well awesome. thank you so much dan and yeah. i will thank you have the links here and um like everything that we talk about everybody please check out um the links down below and thank you so much for your time make sure you will tune in to our channel here and also most importantly in dan's their amazing online events so Stay tuned and don't be a stranger. Much love, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Bye-bye.